they don't give us the sequence. They give us what look to be explicit formulas. So they ask us to find the sum of the first 25 terms of our sequence given by the formula a sub n is equal to 2n minus 1. So, again, I'm going to write my uh, sum formula over here so I can identify, well, what do I need? What do I have? Where do I need to go from there? Okay, so n is what? Twenty-five. It asks for the first twenty-five terms, so n is twenty-five. First of all, I forgot this part. But why did I pick this formula? Why didn't I use the other one? How did? How did I know it was arithmetic? Because it didn't have an exponent. That's one big giveaway. Okay. But we know that explicit formulas for arithmetic sequences are linear functions. Okay. Uh, so we know n is twenty-five. We need our first term. Well, we have the explicit formula, so plug in 1. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. Uh, we need the 25th term. Yeah, I got the explicit formula. Plug in 25. 2 times 25 is 50, minus 1 is 49. So 1 plus 49. So 1 plus 49. So the sum of the first 25 terms here, 1 plus 49 is 50, divided by 2 is 25, 25 times 25 is 625. So the sum of these first 25 terms is 625. Okay. Uh, now, the next one, you should have a, uh, there should be a multiplication symbol between the negative 1 and 2. I think it got slid down a little bit on the paper, so uh, it's not negative 12 to the n minus 1. It's negative 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. All right, so arithmetic or geometric? Geometric. Okay, so our formula is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay, so let's see here. We know n's 25, the first 25 terms. a sub 1, what's our first term? And that this piece right here? A negative 1. 1 minus, what's our r? 2, that's the base. n is 25. Guess what, we really didn't have to figure anything out like we did on the last one. Everything was right there in our formula. Uh, so now we just got to type it in. Again, be careful. 1 minus 2 to the 25th. Multiplying that by negative 1 makes it positive, and then the denominator is negative 1, so it makes it negative again. So this sum of these 25 terms is negative 33,554,431. It's a really big sum. But if you think about this sequence, the ratio is 2. When you start multiplying by 2s, it starts getting pretty big pretty fast. Um, and we're adding up 25 terms, so it kind of makes sense. We're multiplying by 2 every single time. Those numbers are going to start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. The last thing that we need to talk about is that we can actually find the sum of an infinite geometric series under certain conditions. Okay. We can find the sum of an infinite geometric sequence under certain conditions. And that condition is that your common ratio is less than 1. The absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1. Be careful that you don't just say that it's a fraction, because 3 halves is a fraction, but 3 halves is bigger than 1. So if we're multiplying by 3 halves every time, our number's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, but when that common ratio is less than 1, we say that the series or the sequence converges. Okay, To converge on something is that you're approaching something kind of narrowing in on it. Um, so let's think about this for a second. If my sequence was the distance between me and the doorway, okay, and let's say every time I get halfway closer to the door. So my first, first one, let's say I was about eight blocks away, now I'm four blocks away, now I'm two blocks away, now I'm one block away, I'm half a block away, now physically I'm about to be in the doorway, but technically that can keep going for forever, right? If I get halfway closer every single time, 
I'm never technically gonna get in the doorway, but after a certain amount of time, I am so close, I might as well be in the doorway, right? The distance between me and the doorway is like so small that if I'm adding these terms together, yeah, these first two, eight plus four is 12, plus two is 14, plus one is 15, plus a half is 15 and a half, plus four is 15, plus a five. See how it's starting to not have as much influence on that sum? So after a certain amount of time, even though you're still continuing to add numbers, they're so small, they're not affecting that sum. So that's why when your common ratio is less than one, you can find that infinite sum. And the equation is actually simpler. Um, it, all you have to know is the first term, a sub one, and the common ratio. That's all you have to know. Uh, you, you can't know n because you got an infinite term, infinite number of terms, so n is infinite. Uh, so this is all of the equation uh, boils down to. Let me show you the formula sheet really quickly, because I don't want to do that now that we know these formulas. <clears throat> um, there's the arithmetic. Okay, there's your explicit formula. There's your sum formula. And then for the geometric, you've got your explicit formula. Here's your sum for a certain number of terms. Your formula. And notice this one doesn't have a subscript. That's for the infinite um, series or sequence. A sub 1 over 1 minus R. And they even tell you R has to be less than 1. I can't believe that they actually took out the formula sheet, but they do. You can only use this when R is less than 1. Um, so they come out and remind you about that. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the problem. Uh, now, these are written in summation notation, but sometimes they, they don't have to be. So let's decide whether the series converges, and if it does, we're going to find the sum. So let's look at this um, summation notation here. This is the explicit formula right here. 3 times 0.75 to the k minus 1. That's the explicit formula for this geometric sequence. So this is our r. Does the series converge? Is 0.75 less than 1? Yes, 0.75 is less than 1. This group does converge, so we can find the sum. The sum is equal to the first term. What's our first term? 3 over 1 minus r. 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25, or 1 fourth. 3 divided by 1 fourth is 12. The sum of this sequence, infinite sequence, is 12. That's it. Not really. I mean, they, they could ask it in, in terms of an application problem, but, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, B uses N equals zero. Okay. So it's just saying that the first term is the zero term instead of the first term. It's still the same thing. Okay. So this is the common ratio is negative four fifths. The absolute value of that, is that less than 1? Yes, or if this is less than 1, so this one converges. means we can find the sum. What's the first term? One. Okay, there's one. So you look at it one of two ways. Uh, either it, your first term is what's in front of the common ratio, so if there's nothing there, it's going to still be 1. Or you can look at it as, well, I plug in that first number at the bottom for n. So negative 4 fifths to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay? Uh, so first term over 1 minus the ratio, negative 4 fifths. So 1 minus negative 4 fifths is like adding. So 1 plus 4 fifths is 9 fifths. 1 over 9 fifths is 5 ninths. So small sum. But again, yes, if there's nothing in front of it, it's, yeah, same thing again. Okay, now, kind of makes sense that this one should be small because our common ratio is a negative number. So every other term is going to be negative. So when we're adding them together, we're going to add a number and then we're subtracting the number. Then we're adding a number and we're subtracting the number. So it's going to add some and then it's going to take some away. So it makes sense that that sum should be smaller. 
All right, how about C? Does this one converge? Mm -mm. Pi over 2, pi is about 3.14, so dividing that by 2, it's going to be bigger than 1. So the opposite of converging is diverging. So this one diverges. It's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not headed towards one specific value. The numbers are getting bigger. Okay, so it's diverging. Really good book, by the way. All right, let's do the last one. This one's not in summation notation. This one's more in what we would consider a series notation. So it's saying you're taking one, you're adding one half, then you add one fourth, then you add one eighth, and you keep going. So what's our common ratio? One half. Okay, each term is half of the previous term. So that means this converges. So we can find its sum. So the sum is equal to the first term, one over 1 minus the ratio, so that's 1 over 1 half, which is 2. So the sum of 1 plus its half plus its half plus its half for infinity is 2. Kind of neat.